Well, here to tell us a little more about those potential applications is an expert in the field from the German Federal Institute for Materials Research and Testing. Werner Daum, welcome to Tomorrow Today. Thank you. Now, if you're not an expert, you kind of have to ask yourself why we didn't develop this technology decades ago. It seems fairly straightforward. What takes so long? Well, especially in the aircraft, we have already some, some use of sensors, for example, in the engine control and engine surveillance. This is called condition monitoring. So a lot of sensors like temperature and pressure sensors are surveying the, the functionality of the, the turbine. In the structure, that we call it structural health monitoring. And this is a quite new sensing and application technique. And uh, the sensor technology is now ready to use it also for structural health monitoring. And that's the reason why we are now starting with this uh, technology and also the application in the aircraft field. Well, sensors similar to the ones that we saw in our report are, are actually already um, being used in bridges and other structures. How do they work? Yeah, the same like uh, in the, the aircraft. So there are a lot of sensors, for example, the big bridge between Denmark and Sweden. Uh, there we have a lot of sensors for vibration monitoring, for example, temperature monitoring, crack monitoring and so on. And uh, so the structure is monitored, the health of the structure is monitored. And if there is some indication for a damage, then there is some alert and then you can react to that. You can, for example, make a visual inspection or if there is a very uh, heavy damage, for example, then you can stop the, the traffic by uh, using a, a signal, for example, and uh, then react in that way. Most of the testing for this kind of technology does not take place in the laboratory. Yes. Obviously, you can't put a massive uh, bridge in there. Does that pose a particular challenge? Yes, there, is some, uh, there are some challenges uh, to do it also, especially if you think about the big bridge and to, to monitor this bridge, the installation of the sensors and the monitoring itself. So that's a really big uh, challenge. That's right. Now, what projects are you working on currently? Uh, similar to our Switzerland, colleagues from Switzerland, we are also working on that, but we are looking more to the human body. Uh, if you think the human body is uh, also instrumented with a lot of sensors, for example, temperature sensors in your fingers, and if you are, put your finger on a very hot plate, then the body reacts and you remove your hand from the hot plate in order to avoid uh, heavy damage of the skin. And so we are using, for example, uh, fiber optic sensors, uh, fiber optics from just uh, from the telecommunication field. It's a very small uh, optical fiber. We put it into the material and then we can also monitor, for example, crack development and, and other things like that. So we put it directly in the structure and in the material. One problem with these uh, sensors is often ensuring a constant or an independent uh, as well energy supply. What's in the works in that direction? Yes, that's uh, also a big challenge. Uh, it, this topic is called energy harvesting. You can use different uh, uh, things uh, how to or d different physical effects to to generate uh, energy for example vibration you can use uh, uh, or you can use temperature differences like this uh, to uh, to produce energy enough to run the sensors and uh, just briefly because we're almost out of time here are there limits to how much uh, we can control through constant surveillance Yes, it's just like an alert system, just a, a prevention system. There is something going on in the structure. So in, in this sense, we are using these structural health monitoring systems. Fiona Daum, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome.